And Frank, Frank, when you think fairway, you think fresh. Is that the winning culture you've tried to create? Penelope Pineapple, what an unbelievable produce performance. How does your team stay so fresh? Sunfist Orange, is it true Fairway has offered the freshest produce in town since 1938? What can we say? Our produce is so fresh, we're speechless. Hey guys, it's Chris Williams here with Cyclone Fanatic telling you about one of my favorite companies that I've worked with. And I hire them all the time. Country Landscapes, they're located up in Ames, but they have offices in eastern Iowa as well, over in North Liberty. Got one up in Clear Lake. I've hired Country Landscapes to do all the landscaping in my front yard, but I've also hired them to come over and give me advice on planting trees in my front and backyard. Stuff I don't really know about, but boy, the folks at Country Landscapes are experts in this field. They also have a skilled stone mason division that creates outdoor living and cooking spaces. That's something I need to look into. Check them out. Country Landscapes. You want that dream fire pit in your backyard? That's an idea for this spring. Country Landscapes supporting our March Madness coverage of the Cyclones here on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network. When your eye was dealer for life, you do things different. And as your dealer for life, we've driven together for over 45 years. Earl Chevrolet, we're proud of where we're from. We created a premium car buying experience easy for anyone. We serve more Iowans than ever with more locations and more brands. So together, let's drive from your first car to your last car, making memories along the way. We'll always be your dealer for life. Oh, well, good morning, everybody. If you're watching live, we have a abnormally, we're going to have a, this will be a bigger live audience than uh, my buddy Aiden Wyatt is expecting. It's We're going live at 2.08 in the morning um, here in Boston, 108 back in Iowa. Uh, most of you, the overwhelming majority of you will be uh, taking this in on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network Friday morning at some point. And, uh, but there's like two, almost 300 of you in here right now. So you feel free to leave your comments on the uh, post game show. We are presented by our friends all season long by our friends at Carl Chevrolet bringing us post game. But we also want to thank Keen Project Solutions, Central States Roofing, Fairway Meat and Grocery, and Country Landscapes. Iowa State loses, man, that, really a difficult game to describe, and I'm going to do my best to go through it. I also want to make note that I'll look at some big picture things in this podcast here, uh, but I'll probably do more of that you know, later on. We've got all off season to um, decipher through all that. But th this game was maddening. Uh, you know, really the first half, Everything that we said leading up to this one that couldn't happen for Iowa State, really it did, right? So you, you get off to this really poor shooting performance. You, you know, a game that's being called very tightly. I don't even know if the officials were, were bad tonight. I'm not even saying that. It was just, it was one of those games where I felt like Kip Kissinger was calling a Big 12 game. Uh, and then I thought Courtney Green and the other guy whose uh, name escapes me were calling a much closer game. And it didn't work in Iowa State's favor. Um, you know, Iowa State had every opportunity. I thought, you know, Shannon going out with four fouls early in the second half to Illinois going 15 of 29 from the free throw line. Iowa State had every opportunity, despite all of that, to to win this basketball game and, and just, you know, couldn't get over the hump. So many times Iowa State's within two, and, you know, the uh, poor Keyshawn Gilbert and that missed layup, he's going to think about that one for a long time. The, the Trey King lob that he couldn't finish. Uh, there's just a lot of opportunity there for Iowa State to... I think if Iowa State ties it, I think they win the game because it it's a it's a mental thing. Is as, as T.J. Otzelberger talked about afterwards, and Cyclones just couldn't couldn't quite get there tonight. 
They go 17 of 21 at the free throw line, which is really good for this team. But you're what 29 percent in the first half, and uh, there were just too many of those scoring droughts. We thought it, <clears throat> even though Iowa State played some pretty good defense in the really for to hold Illinois to what they did. I mean, it wasn't an elite defensive game for Iowa State, but it wasn't bad. Uh, I, th- I thought that Shannon got open early, and to me, that was really good coaching on the part of Brad Underwood and less bad game planning by Iowa State. It They scouted Iowa State and that trap defense really well, I thought, early on, and then Otzelberger and Kyle Green made great adjustments for Iowa State, and it wasn't the same, but the problem was you had already dug yourself a 10-point deficit. Talked to a lot of the guys after the game. And and that was they said what they said just you know trying to climb back that whole time it it wears on you and I thought it sped Iowa State up a lot just across the board, um, and that was just a really really frustrating game. It that that'll be a game I you know I was thinking about this. That'll be a game that like you know we us old timers uh, will refer to like the 2005 football season where there's so many of these games where it's just like, God, they could have won the conference. Right. And like, you could have been in the holiday bowl at that time, which is a really big accomplishment for football back then, but you could never get over the hump that season. Um, there's, there's other examples. That was the first thing that came to my mind, but this feels like, um, this feels like the Aaron craft game to me, really. Right. Like this, where you, Niang's first, first season um where iowa state could have won the thing and you know just you, you just couldn't quite do it and but we still talk about it right like it's one of those games that lives forever and it um it'll sting uh thanks to Abe wyatt for staying up with me aiden if you don't mind um I kind of want to play a couple of those interviews um, here. If you can yep. pull those up from Twitter. Because uh, there's a lot of people shitting on Milan Momchilovic in the comments. And I want to show what Milan had to say afterwards. Uh, you were the one who texted me this. I gave you all the credit. You said it feels like Niang after that Ohio State game. And, and that was the vibe I got. Milan was 0 for 4 tonight. Um one of his worst games of the season. Here's what he had to say afterwards. Um, Sterns and teams help from weak side corner just everywhere. Um, but they stayed close to me. They didn't give me any open threes, real threes. So, uh, and then I just missed a couple shots that uh, you know, just, uh, a little bit different. But, uh, there were so many moments where it felt like it was kind of right there for the taking. You never could quite grasp it. Just how frustrating was that, and as it keeps happening with consistency. Yeah, it was definitely frustrating. Um, I mean, my teammates played so well today. I don't give credit to that. I think I just I came on soft today, um, and I think that was one of the biggest reasons we didn't win that game today. So, um, just motivation for next year. Oh, that's tough. Uh, pull up Lipsy, too, if you don't mind. I, I'd like to show everybody that. Momchilovic, you know, for a freshman to just go out there and say, it's on me, like, that. that's that's special. There's not a lot of freshmen, not a lot of freshmen who um, had the maturity, the mindset to, to be able to to come up with that. Here's uh, the team leader, Tame and Lipsy afterwards. Tame, you guys started slow, made it really interesting there in the end. What was your outlook on tonight? What happened? Yeah, they just came out ready to go. I feel like we were a step behind in the start, and uh, that made it hard. Uh, we were for, pretty much fighting from behind the whole game, and uh, we were able to make runs in that second half and put together um, some performances and great stuff, but we weren't able to uh, execute in that. What um in the second half you guys felt like you could always kind of get there and couldn't quite get over the hump. What did that feel like? It was tough. Uh, we kept getting the one possession game and uh, just weren't able to get it get get the lead. And uh, it was tough because we were fighting. We were we were working for it, and uh, that's hard to see when you guys are putting in so much effort and uh, we're just coming together and trying to fight and we just come come up one one step short. What's your overall? Looking back, just 
on the season. How are you going to remember season. this one? It was a great season. Obviously, it's hard to look back right now, just all the emotion, but obviously Big 12 champs in, in the conference tournament is, is a big deal. And undefeated at home, and just this group of guys was, was special. And, uh, I'm going to miss those seniors. What are the emotions like right now? It was tough, really, um, with those seniors that I won't be able to play with again. Um, uh, Trey, Austin, uh, Rob, uh, the impact that they've had on me uh, since I was a freshman last year. And, uh, just playing with them for, for two seasons, it's hard to see that go. Um, how do you guys use this season as a leaping off point for the future of the program as you continue to build it? Yeah, obviously it's hard right now, um, but we made the Sweet 16, and that's that's obviously a big, big thing. And, I think we're probably in the top 10 program in the country, and that's when you look at it, that's that's really impressive, and that's good for this group of team, this group of guys, and uh, we put in so much work, so we got a lot to build off of, and a lot of pieces that are, that are coming back. There you go, Taman Lipsy. After the game, uh, Aiden's watching it back, back home in Iowa. What, the, what was the, what was it like on TV? I guess did it. Did it come off any different? Like, what was the commentary like? That type of stuff. Like, because I, uh, I, I, a I was lot of there. people did not think it was pro Iowa State commentary. I'll say that much. But really, <clears throat> yeah. Um, but I really didn't notice it personally. I just the the frustrating thing about this game is, again, I'm gonna go back to it, Illinois. So Iowa State missed all these layups, all these dunks, missed all these opportunities, right? And, but Illinois gave Iowa State opportunities too. 15 of 29 from the free throw line. Terrence Shannon picking up his fourth foul with like 12 minutes to go. And for some reason tonight, Iowa State could never step on their throat. And... It was just a really perplexing game. I think if those two teams play ten times on a neutral court, Iowa State's going to win six to seven of them at least. I honestly do, and I'm not. And I think Illinois is a really good team. I just, you know, um, it was one of those nights. You know, the other thing too that we haven't talked about is while Iowa State's missing all these layups. Illinois has that one. You knew it's not your night when Robert Jones d does the deflect thing and then it gets knocked. That was the so dumb. That was oh unbelievable. Oh my god! Just combine it all, and it's just like that was just a bad night. It was a really bad night for Iowa State, and like every freaking thing we outlined going into this game. Well, this can't go wrong. If that happens, they're going to lose. If that happens, they're going to lose. Every single one of them hit. Every one of them, and. You still only lose by three, so that is a that is a game that you know we'll find silver linings and and I I think this team will be ranked in the top ten to fifteen in the country preseason next year. That is a game that we will all be talking about ten years from now. That's one like that you and your buddies at the bar. Ah, oh, God, remember the freaking Sweet Sixteen game against Illinois. That Rob Jones tip into the basket. I mean, that was oh. that was the our pets' heads are falling off moment for me. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it, it it was. I just I texted my family in my group chat at that point. And I say that's it's boy. If you if you ever want evidence that it's not your night, that's evidence that it's not your night. Um. I'll go on to a couple other things here tonight. Uh, maybe we play the Robert, maybe pull Robert Jones up too. I want to get to that because I want to recognize him. Um, I, I just think that he, I put him my Twitter after I, uh, I, I tag teamed him in the interview with Travis Hines. And Robert Jones is, Matt is asking me where the Cody Road is. Uh, sir, I have, thanks to my friend Steve Kemp, I've got six shooters of Cody Road right here. The problem is it's almost 3 o'clock in the morning. 
And I just don't know if getting drunk at 3 a.m. is a great idea, because then you're going to be hung over at, like, noon. And I don't know when I'm coming home yet. Like, I, we got all sorts of stuff up in the air. As Aiden said, my pet's heads are falling off. Um, so Robert Jones, we're going to hear from him. But I, 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 I've i said this, and I mean it to my core. He's one of my favorite Cyclones of all time. We have two of them right now. It's Robert Jones and, and Emily Ryan. And, and, and Tame and Lipsy will be on that list at some point. But... Robert Jones, and there, it's okay. Um, God damn it! Like this guy's taking so much shit. And all he does is show up every day, and lead and work. This is a guy whose entire, you know, the basis of his entire Iowa State career is being the energy guy who does the shit that nobody else wants to do, to being the junkyard dog. And he's gotten so much better. It's all hard work. It's all grit and determination. And I think this guy, and I alluded to him in this interview, and you guys will hear it. To me, this guy is, he's right up there with Niang, Naz, you know, all the big personalities of the Hoiberg era. Robert Jones is the, he is the Melvin Edgem of the Hoiberg era for the Otzelberger era. He's the glue that kept it all together. That's what Robert Jones is. And let's hear from him after the game. I see the fans get back to Ames and graduate from this college. It's sad. I cried already, so I might cry again. Other than that, that's all I got. What, how difficult was it just to get so close on probably three or four possessions there where you guys could have tied it up or take the lead and not quite be able to get over the hump? It's tough just because uh, you, you got to play a perfect game and you're down at the end of the game. You got to play perfect. No foul. Uh, got to convert on every possession. and We didn't do that. So we ended up losing. I mean, it doesn't start there. It doesn't start at the end of the game. It starts at the beginning. How we came out, 11 to 2, it's not who we are. We come out and strike teams right from the box, and we didn't do that today. We played from behind the whole time. And that's not who we are. That's not what we're about. And uh, that's why we lost. No, it just ended, but what's this season and what you guys were able to do all year long mean for you to, to go out on? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's big. I mean, I mean, looking at the positives, 28, 28 and 8, huge, huge season uh, in terms of wins. Um, won the conference championship, finished second in the Big 12. Um, what well, well, we just talked about, 23 and 0 at home, 18 and 0 in Hilton, 3 and 0 in Hilton South, and then what we're going to now call uh, the, the, the CHI Health Center in Hilton West, 2 and 0 there. So winning every game at home is, is big time. And, uh, coming out of here, uh, just got to be able to write a different story. What's the last three years just being at Iowa State and your growth mean to you? Oh, uh, man, it, it means a lot. Uh, huge shout out to, to Kyle Green for bringing me here and TJ Altsberger for taking a chance on me and uh, continuing to, to be behind me throughout the way. I mean, we had our challenges year one, uh, but sticking it out and uh, just learning and growing every year, every day, uh, every second, um, made it made it, made it it easy to get to the point where we are now. Uh, easy not saying that it was easy, easy saying that we made it here, and that's what we did. What would you say to fans about the future of the program? And what do you, where, do you, where do you think Iowa State goes from here? I know you're not here, but. Well, I'd be super happy. I mean, you have. Everybody who, who scores at a high level coming back. I mean, Curtis coming back. Um, Keyshawn coming back. The best point guard in the nation is coming back. I mean, uh, I, I feel super special with, with, with everybody coming back. And um, I didn't even get to mention Milan and um, Caden Fish, Jelani Hamilton, who didn't even play this year. Uh, JT, who's also on a red shirt scholarship. I mean, we got a lot of great guys in this program. And uh, I feel like. Uh, it, it might be an even more together team. If if not, then it'll be just as good. I feel like the, the fans should should have a lot to look forward to. Some of these guys, they they graduate and they disappear. You 
Are you one of those guys that will see around here a little bit, it feels like? Man, we'll see. I mean, hometown is Minnesota. It's only two and a half away from, from Ames. And, uh, I don't know. I've known Chamin since he was an eighth grader, so uh, I'd love to continue to support. And Damarian played with my little brother on AAU, so I know him very well. Uh, roommates with them. Um, I hate to shy away from, from being a part of this program. And, uh, of course, the coaching staff is still going to be here, so um, it'll be... It'll be interesting to see who my future holds. There you go, Robert Jones, uh, after the game. You know, the one thing, too, that, that I didn't bring up that I, that I should have as far as where this game went wrong for Iowa State, and it's the one statistic that this team, you can always hang your hat on with this particular team, and it's points off of turnovers. And Iowa State was dreadful here tonight they were outscored off of turnovers 14 to 7 by Illinois and that that pretty much tells you the story of this Iowa State basketball team really great in transition really average in the half court and um, fast break points tonight 17 to 9 Illinois outscores Iowa State and the other one too is is assists only nine assists on 23 turnovers for Iowa State tonight 16 on 24 for Illinois so they're just moving the basketball well and um, just a, a game that went wrong from the beginning although I will say when Iowa State pulled it within four early in the second half and then Keyshawn it was before Keyshawn had those two bad turnovers. I thought Iowa State was going to win by 10. Did you feel that way too, Aiden? I yeah, thought when yeah they the got vibes the, were definitely I was like, going it's way over. up at that point. Yeah. Well, it was like in the Washington State game when it was 14 to 10 or something, when Taman took it the length of the floor and got a layup. I'm like, yeah, it's over. And when Iowa State was down two at that point, and it kind of had the same feeling mm. once Iowa State got going tonight. It's like, all right, here we go. And, yeah, I just couldn't get over the hump. And, and the game was over when they didn't take the lead when Shannon was on the bench, too. That They just couldn't take advantage. The other thing, too, was in the last five minutes of the first half, like Illinois went on a – I think they went on an 0-for-7 field goal drought, I think was my note. And Iowa State just couldn't – They you know they were within 10 at halftime, and it kind of felt like a win, but realistically with Illinois' free throw was they should have been within five. And that's the difference in the game. That's the difference in the game. If you would, this is a weird, weird box score too. If you had told me going into this game, okay, it's going to be primarily played in the '60s, right? Some junk stuff at the end. I'm taking Iowa State all day, every day. However, if you would have told me that what's 18 plus. Hold on, I'm trying to do math. 41 fouls are going to be called, and Illinois would shoot 29 free throws. I would have thought Iowa State would lose by double digits. Yeah, I'm probably right there with you. So just, yeah, just a weird, weird basketball game. That I mean, I, I could sit here and overanalyze this thing all night. At the end of the day, uh, I already got um, dozens of you in the comments asking about transfers and and all that yes there will be guys who will transfer i promise you it's college basketball in 2024 but there will be other cyclones this is there's never been a time aiden a better time to be a premium subscriber at cyclone fanatic because i reported on i've already reported on four transfer portal targets for iowa state who they are already speaking with uh so yeah, y'all should go subscribe. I'm not gonna give you the, I'm not gonna give you the milk for free. Um, but we're in that time of year, and you know, it's already going on. This whole ridiculousness of having the portal open the day of the NCAA tournament, or the the Monday of the NCAA tournament, is is insane. Um, but. It's, it's the nature of the beast. 
Real quick, Mason is asking. I'll do a little bit of this, guys. I don't want to do too much because it's almost 3 o'clock in the morning. But Mason is asking, early starting lineup projections for next season, Chris. Yeah, give me a minute. Let me pull up what I think the roster will look. I mean, clearly, Taman Lipsy, Keyshawn Gilbert, Milan Momchilovic, and Curtis Jones are, are locks. Um, I mean, Curtis Jones, 26 tonight. My God. I saw a lot of people saying he had a a Dustin Hogue Sweet 16 performance. That's not bad. I would argue that um, Hogue's was way more of a surprise than Keyshawn or than than Curtis doing this. Curtis has just been ascending ever since that TCU game Mm -hmm. that that Lipsy didn't play in because of injury. Curtis is... It, it's been he's he's been really interesting year. If you listen to me and Bloom, and you read our premium stuff last um, September October, we thought this guy would be, you know, this player earlier, uh, but it took him. It took him just a little bit longer to adjust to the high major level, and once he did. I I don't know with Taman, Keyshawn, and Curtis if there's a a more well-rounded, experienced, better backcourt in the country going into next year. Now that's a big statement. Uh, let's see what UConn and the you know those types of teams have. Like Iowa State's going to be in the top five in that category though with those three guys. So that's great. And I'll and I would take those three guys and their experience in that that aspect of it and their their chemistry over five stars elsewhere because I think that's just as important in college basketball as as anything. I had a college bas- I had a coach in Omaha last week, an assistant coach for one of the teams there who I've known for a really long time, and he was telling me that that's by far the thing that folks in my profession don't talk enough about is the togetherness and the transfer portal era and the importance with that. And I'll also say this too, just a vulnerable moment here because I'm thanks to the Des Moines registers, Travis Hines, he loaned me some beer. Um, again, I just felt like I couldn't start drinking Cody road at 3 AM. It's just, it, it seems like a bad move. Um, I'm so proud of TJ and that staff and where they got this team maxed out. I really do. I, I think this team maxed. They, I said, I think they should have won tonight. I'm just saying they have this team playing as good as it could at the end of the year. And it's March and shit happens and it doesn't always go your way. That's, that's how I would describe it. But they, they had this team locked. The thing I admired the most about Ots is how he out he consistently has all these guys working towards the same thing top to bottom in his program if it's the freaking ceo at the end of the bench getting everybody amped up if it's five star omaha blue coming off the bench against kansas state in the big 12 tournament to give you great minutes if it's your team leader tame and lipsy and robert jones they're all on the same page they're all going the same direction it's so impressive and that's why I tweeted, this sucks, but the, I mean, I've, I've been doing this a long time. I basically came in right after the Larry Eustachy thing hit. So Wayne Morgan on, I've been covering this program, and I don't think it's ever been in a better long-term spot. When Fred left, every, it hurt because we all loved Fred, and it hurt. But I promise you, it wasn't going in the right direction at that point. And I think Fred knew that, and I think it's one of the reasons why he left. I'm, sp- I'm not speaking for him. I'm just pondering. Like, they they hadn't recruited a high school kid in, like, two and a half years. Like, th- it was not it was not trending in a good direction at that point. And I think the next year would have been great. Fred would have gotten them farther than Prom did. I truly believe that. That could have been a Final Four team if Fred's the head coach. But after that, I think it really, you know, Steve really caught a break when Naz redshirted and, you know, all that, all that stuff happened. 
but I didn't feel like it was in like long term like great position. And I, I truly believe that T.J. Otzelberger is Iowa State's Tom Izzo type of coach. I don't think he's leaving, and I think that he's he's young enough. He, he's a freaking CEO. He's constantly zigging when others zag. He is. I I I, I can't say enough good things about him. And the other blessing of all of it is that we're in this weird era where rules are changing and and the Ots is the guy I want leading the way because he knows where every freaking dead body is buried in Ames, Iowa. He knows everything about it because he's he's I, my favorite employees are are the ones who have done the grunt work and then they work their way up to become the CEO. Those are the guys I want and that's Ots with Iowa State. So I, I, I truly think that this is the, the best long-term spot the program's, I don't want to say ever been in because I, but, but yeah, I think it may be. I think it might be. I think we're going to go into next year with two top 10 preseason teams with the Iowa State men and women and then wrestling preseason top five, I would think. I get you all fired up in there, what, young age. Great time to be a Cyclone fan. It really Question is. for you though. So I was talking to my dad tonight after the game, and uh, I think this might be my favorite. I know I'm a I'm a child, but this might be my favorite Iowa State basketball team of all time. For me, it was always the 2013-14 team. That was no one was ever going to top them. But just yeah. I don't know. This team was just this so much is- fun to watch. Definitely one of my favorites too. Yeah, I. Hmm. Yeah, I. It, it, you know, everybody's. I think would have been if Fred stays one more year. That team would have been. I'm not trying to shit on Prom. It, it was just different. Like it. It's like you you have a new lead singer in the band, right? Like it. it it was just different that year, mm-hmm. after because that team underachieved, and I don't think I don't necessarily even think this team overachieved. Like I think they were really good. Like I, I, I think they got everything out of them. Like I, I don't, I don't, yep. I would not use the totally word overachieved. I wouldn't use the word overachieved with this group. I think I think the last were, two years you could have said yes. that team won a lot of games they weren't supposed to, you right. know. But this year, totally different. Yeah, I just think they maxed out, and they caught a really hot team in Illinois, and I think they got some bad whistles. But I don't, I don't. Again, I want to. I don't think the game was poorly officiated tonight. I think it was tightly officiated tonight, and that was the problem. Like this was what Houston got last Sunday night, and Houston was able to edge that thing out and get out of there alive, where Iowa State just couldn't. Good good analysis there, Aiden, on the – oh, can I make one more comp? I did this on Twitter in the first half where C- Curtis Jones is Tyrus McGee. You know, and that'll be – you got to yeah. start him next year, but, like, Tyrus was this guy who Fred always wanted off the bench because of his energy, and he mm-hmm. Fred just liked him off the bench, but he also – it was often times where you just couldn't afford to not have Tyrus on the court. And that's that's what Curtis is now. Like this offense is so much better when he's on the floor. And he uh man, he he was really freaking good tonight. And I don't think he's the amount of confidence that guy's gonna come into next year with. And guy I know it's hard because it's the era we live in, but I'm not just going to address every player and say if I think he's going to transfer tonight, guys. It's not It's not what this show's about. And I have no reason to think any of those guys are going to transfer. So I'm not just going to sit here and speculate on that the, the night that the season ended. This is crazy as we wrap this up, Aiden. It, back in Iowa, it's 1.40 in the morning. And we have over a thousand people watching this thing live. Pretty cool. 
You guys are nuts. I love you for it. You freaking love the clones. We all love, we just love the clones, right? Like you wake up and you. Hey, we're, we're just a couple of guys. <laughs> love the clones. Sitting around having a beer at <laughs> 3 a.m. Talking cyclones. Grant says, is Chris Williams going to transfer? I can assure you that he's not. That Chris Williams is an Iowa State lifer. Uh, the, there are a few things in my life that sound worse than moving and doing the whole media thing in another market. I would, I, I do not have the energy for it. I will go work for Mechdyne. There's <laughs> <laughs> no chance. I'm, I'm Iowa State for life. There's, I don't want to leave. All my, you guys are like my second psychotic family. I'm not going anywhere. I will say this. Um, the last like month and a half, I haven't crunched the numbers, but I think that we are. I think it's been the most popular month in the history of Cyclone Fanatic, as far as terms of downloads and clicks and YouTube you know, has blown up. So shout out everyone for checking yes. stuff out there. Well, you have a lot of the, a lot to do with that, young man. Uh, so thank you. You taking us into the new era but like it it's great i texted a guy tonight who might be doing some stuff with us in the future and i was like dude this is like it's 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 crazy like the numbers we're pulling right now and like people people really love iowa state basketball they love football too i was explaining this to my wife the the passion is the same for football and basketball they love them both the difference is basketball's in the middle of these awful Iowa winters, right? And like it's it's just like oh oh great Tuesday oh okay now we got a game on Saturday oh the women play Wednesday, like it's it's, it's just like go this, go go for about five months. Basketball season's exhausting. Like when you do what we do, poor Aiden's doing this for the first time. I had to give him like a pep talk the other day. We had a come to Jesus meeting, didn't we? Well, it's you know. You got to like pinch yourself a little bit because it's like, if I would have told you, like, Aiden's getting tired, right? Because he's doing these two companies and he's, you know, doing a great job and Thanks. staying up and doing podcasts with me at two o'clock in the morning. It's, but like, I, I had this moment just today before the game where I thanked all of our subscribers because it's like, God, like, I can't believe Cyclone Fanatic is still even existing after the first two years we had where we was, were just hemorrhaging money by the month. You know, and now, like, we're doing these post-game shows with now 1,100 people are watching at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's freaking crazy to me. So thank you. Like, we couldn't do any of us without all of you guys. And yeah, it's a, it's been a really fun year, a very enjoyable year. You, anytime... You are in the best league in the country, and you're one game out of winning it or two games, whatever, ended up. You win a tournament. You two-seed in the NCAA tournament. We had these amazing experiences in Omaha. You win great road games. You go undefeated at home. And this is just the men. This isn't even talking about what Finley's group did this year. That, to me, is way more of a surprise than what the men did. Mm -hmm. I, if you would have told me in September that Finley's group was going to get to the round of 32, I would have thought you were nuts. Yeah, they felt yeah. like a bubble team going into the year, but totally just exploded my expectations. Yeah, just a just a solid year, and we appreciate all you guys. I'm going to get to work on all my other stuff. And, um, yeah, it's just, uh, just want to thank everybody. Uh, so please give us five stars. And, uh, unfortunately we, li we live in a world of algorithms. So the more you guys can like, like our stuff and share and all that stuff, it, it really helps Cyclone Fanatic grow. Thanks, Aiden. Appreciate yep. you, brother. Good stuff. All right. I'm going to go and take about two months off. I'm kidding. <laughs> Transfer portal season starts tomorrow, everybody. And conference realignment season could start anytime. Oh, God. <laughs> I hope it's a little calmer than last season. Last year, it felt like because the gambling thing hits, 
and then it was the Big Twelve is the Big Twelve is going to blow up the Pac Twelve. Um, it didn't feel like we had an off season, and I don't. I have a feeling that this season might be the same. The Big Twelve is going to do something. I don't know what, but like these ACC schools are going to blow up. I have, I just have a feeling it's going to be crazy. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here. You do the same. Thanks, Aiden, right. for staying up. We appreciate yep. it. We appreciate all of you. Uh, if you're listening to this on Friday morning, thanks for following all of our coverage. I also want to recognize our our sponsors one more time: Carl Auto Group, Keen Project Solutions. Central States Roofing, Fairway Meat and Grocery, and Country Landscapes. For Aiden Wyatt, my name is Chris Williams signing off here on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network.